this video I'm going to show you how to write a string in uh, Windows command prompt console uh, from the assembly language and uh, what's special about this is that I'm not going to use any uh, predefined library or uh, function uh, I'm uh, just using uh, plain assembly language and performing a syscall uh, to the Windows kernel. So let's take a look at this program. Uh, actually uh, for uh, writing a string to the Windows console is not uh, that easy <coughs> because uh, first you have to obtain a handle to the console out uh, so this uh, is done using the NT create file uh, syscall and uh, then uh, you are able to write to it like you would write to a file using the NT write file uh, syscall so we have here uh, two syscalls so let's take a look at the first one uh, first uh, you should uh, probably uh, take a look at the description of the associated uh, function so um, it has a number of uh, parameters here I am not going into detail uh, regarding all the parameters uh, you can read about them here but uh, the function will return a file handle here you have to specify uh, what you want to do uh, so you probably want to write to the console uh, and there are also some uh, optional uh, parameters and uh, different uh, attributes access and so on so um, uh, let's see uh, first uh, for sending the parameters um, Windows is using uh, registers R10, EDX, R8, R9. So this would be for the force for the first four parameters. So these uh, are the first four parameters you need to specify them in these registers. The following parameters are sent. Uh, on the stack so this is something that uh, you may be used to uh, when um, you're writing uh, C code with a fast call convention uh, however there is a difference here uh, in uh, C you normally have the first parameter in register RCX while here uh, the first parameter is in R10 and after that uh, the rest of the parameters follow the same convention so uh, in R10 uh, we will receive the file handle so I'm sending here a uh, uh, pointer to a memory location uh, where uh, this file handle will be written I'm going to show it to you soon in EDX I'm specifying uh, the desired access I've placed here generic write for the console out I want to be able to write to it uh, then uh, we have a pointer to a structure uh, containing object attributes uh, another pointer to an IO status block uh, this is also an output parameter uh, then uh, after these four parameters we need to use the stack so I'm pushing on the stack first the allocation size again this is a pointer uh, to an allocation size parameter uh, and then we have the file attributes uh, share access uh, we are okay uh, having multiple processes writing to the console uh, what we want to do uh, in case of the console we just want to open it if it were a real file maybe you would want to overwrite it if uh, it would exist but for the console we just want to open it uh, we also want uh, some creation options and uh, 
finally the last two parameters will be set to zero so xor rax rax actually sets rax to zero and then this value is pushed uh, onto the stack uh, now uh, maybe you see here that uh, i leave a space the first uh, 32 bytes are uh, reserved on the stack and the reason is um, this would be the space uh, required by setting these parameters uh, these uh, first four parameters but uh, you actually don't uh, push them on the stack you just uh, reserve that space it's a bit weird but this is the calling convention and we need to respect it so uh, this is also the reason why uh, initially here I allocated 88 bytes uh, on the stack yeah uh, these numbers here are in decimal not in hexadecimal so uh, i'm starting with the first parameter at uh, byte 32 uh, last parameter at byte 80 and uh, it will it will uh, take eight uh, bytes even though here i uh, mentioned it as a d word pointer but uh, it will uh, be aligned it will be memory aligned so there will be eight bytes out so in total we have 88 bytes uh, on the stack uh, then uh, normally uh, following this uh, setup if we were for example in c code or uh, in assembly but linking to ntdll uh, then uh, here we would have uh, cx instead of r10 and we would make a call to the anti-create file and inside anti-create file uh, there will be a move uh, rcx in r10 then it will set the syscall in uh, racks in this case 85 or 55 in hexadecimal uh, and uh, then it will make the syscall so to simulate this call that would happen uh, i am also subtracting another eight bytes uh, from the stack and i am doing the uh, syscall so again we have the parameters in r10 edx r8 r9 and then on the stack and we have uh, these additional eight bytes here uh, because you normally make a call uh, to this user space function which in turn we'll uh, actually do the syscall okay so uh, everything here uh, will uh, return a handle uh, to the console out so let's see uh, what is in these uh, structures and then i will uh, go back to the second call so what we have here we have uh, this uh, handle which will be used uh, to return the uh, console handle then we have a status structure this actually contain two contain two fields and in case of an error you can uh, look in here for more information not always useful though uh, or in case of success you can also uh, look here and uh, for example determine if file was created or opened in the case of the console it will be opened so uh, then uh, we have this allocation uh, size again for the console this is not really relevant uh, and uh, the attributes structure where we have uh, the length of the structure this is uh, computed here uh, root directory again for the console this is not relevant uh, and the pointer to the file name we'll see uh, how this looks like and uh, some attributes for example i want the file name to be case insensitive i want uh, it to be inheritable by sub processes and so on and you can specify a security descriptor uh, the security attributes if you want again this is probably not relevant for the console uh, now let's take a look at this uh, 
file name, file name specification, uh, and this is actually a Unicode string uh, structure. So a Unicode string structure is defined like this uh, in uh, C. So you can see it's uh, unsigned short for the length, for the maximum length, and the pointer to a buffer. So um, here I have the size of the file name, the uh, size of the buffer, uh, and the file name. But uh, this needs to be uh, memory aligned to 64 bits. So um, since uh, this only takes two bytes and these two bytes, uh, we need uh, an additional uh, four bytes uh, here for the alignment. So uh, yeah, if you don't do that, you will probably get a uh, memory access exception or a memory alignment. Uh, now for the file name, uh, I have here two examples. Uh, this would be with a real file name, but for the console, uh, we have this uh, thing. Uh, and in uh, Windows Unicode, um, each character is represented by two bytes, uh, one being the actual ASCII character and one being zero. So this is for ASCII characters. And for other uh, languages, uh, of course, both bytes uh, would mean something. But for ASCII characters, it's like this. So uh, what I'm doing here, I'm um, using the ASCII characters, but uh, each one will, will occupy uh, two bytes. So that's the DW here. And what uh, we have, we have corn out uh, dollar. But this is preceded by uh, backslash, question mark, question mark, backslash, and then uh, con out uh, dollar. So uh, if you are used to calling, for example, create file A, uh, C function, uh, then in the background, uh, it will convert your regular string to a Unicode string. It will apply uh, this prefix and finally to be able to call uh, entry create file but in this case I uh, didn't want to introduce additional functions here so I just uh, represented the string as it is. Uh, you saw in the code also some constants like generic write, file share read, file share write, file open. Uh, these are uh, defined here these are just numbers uh, taken from uh, Windows header files. So nothing special about these ones. But as I said, I'm not using uh, any external uh, included file or library or anything. So following uh, this syscall in each uh, std out, I have the console file handle. Uh, now remember on the stack uh, we introduced 88 plus 8 uh, bytes so now I'm clearing this stack and I'm moving to the second uh, Cisco so um, again uh, we are following the same convention this would be the Cisco for anti write file so uh, again in R10 uh, is the first parameter. This is the handle that we uh, previously obtained, but in this case we don't send the pointer to the handle, we send the actual handle. Uh, then um, uh, we are setting uh, RDX to 0, uh, R8 to 0, R9 to 0. So these are other parameters called event APC or an APC context, we don't need them here. Uh, we also set um, a pointer to the status, and this will be the first uh, parameter pushed onto the stack. Uh, the next parameter is a buffer containing our message, uh, then uh, the length of the buffer, uh, byte offset and uh, zero for the final parameter. 
so um, again, we need to uh, make available on the stack the first 32 bytes. Then we start here. Uh, and the last parameter is uh, at uh, byte 64, uh, takes eight uh, bytes. So in total, 72 bytes are needed on the stack. So uh, this is what uh, it's happening here. I'm uh, allocating 72 bytes on the stack. Of course, you could have uh, combined these two, but uh, I just wanted to make the code uh, easier to read. Uh, then uh, we set the syscall for the entry write file in the RAX register. Uh, we allocate eight additional bytes on the stack and perform the syscall. Uh, finally, uh, we clear uh, the stack and uh, we remember to remove 72 plus uh, eight, so in total 80 bytes. And uh, finally, I'm uh, using red to uh, return from the program. Uh, now, uh, let's take a look at the message. So the message is here. Uh, this time is plain uh, ASCII because uh, entry write file uh, doesn't uh, do anything with the characters. Uh, it just uh, takes whatever bytes are available here and uh, these are uh, being written uh, to the file handle. Uh, after the message, I also added some padding for memory alignment. Uh, finally, uh, I have here a byte offset, which is set to zero. Um, initially, I thought it uh, would be possible to just send zero in uh, racks, but uh, no, it uh, didn't want to work. So uh, I'm sending this uh, byte offset, which is simply set to zero. Okay, um, now uh, before I um, uh, switch to compiling and uh, showing you the execution of the program, I want to mention two things. Uh, one, uh, it is not recommended uh, performing uh, syscalls uh, like this uh, without uh, checking at least the Windows version. Uh, according to the documentation, the syscall number may change between Windows version. On the other hand, uh, anti-create file and anti-write file uh, were quite stable and uh, on previous Windows versions uh, there was the same uh, syscall number, at least uh, in uh, previous uh, recent uh, Windows versions. So uh, this should work, but it's just uh, not the recommended way of uh, doing it. Uh, instead, uh, you should have checked the Windows version and uh, check to make sure uh, that the syscall is uh, uh, valid. And for this, there are various tables uh, available uh, online with uh, syscalls. Or uh, even better, uh, probably you should not do a direct syscall and instead uh, obtain a pointer to the integrate file function uh, from the Windows DLL and call it. But uh, anyway, as a proof of concept, this is how you do uh, syscall to uh, integrate file and to anti write file. Uh, another observation is that uh, normally you not end the program with uh, red, even though it works, but uh, you should instead use another syscall uh, to exit the program and uh, set an, uh, uh, a status code for the program. But as I said, this works. Okay, so um, now let's move on to uh, compiling this. So I created a small uh, BAT program. I'm uh, setting the path to my 64-bit uh, 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 build tools installation. I created a 
previous video uh, showing you how to install uh, Microsoft Macro Assembler for uh, Windows 64 bit. And then I'm using ML64, so this is the MASM 64 bit, uh, to compile uh, the uh, program. And uh, let's take a look here. So currently uh, in this uh, folder I have the build uh, bat program uh, and the disp.asm. And uh, this .asm is uh, this file that I've uh, showed them. And we build it using build.bat. And uh, what is this doing is exactly uh, what I uh, shown you. It uh, says the path and calls ML64. And what are these parameters here? Um, I want to produce a listing file, uh, then um, I want to allocate uh, 100, uh, that's a hexadecimal number actually, uh, bytes for the stack. Uh, I want to include uh, debugging information. Uh, also here in the link I'm specifying the starting point, which is the main uh, proc this is how i called it you can call it whatever uh, again uh, debug uh, i don't want any default libraries and uh, this is compiled for a console application and now if we look at the resulting files we have here uh, disp.exe and if we execute it, we get this uh, hello world uh, message that you saw there. So I hope you enjoyed this video. Uh, and so if you did, don't forget to like, subscribe, leave comments. And see you next time. Bye.